Next up, we have uh, Rodolfo from the Unicamp team, I believe, or... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. that's it. Take it away. Well, hi everyone. So let's begin with our motivation. As you are likely aware, diffusion models have achieved some impressive results lately. So we wanted to try out their application to, to our task. We decided to start our development using the human motion diffusion model or MDM because it's closely related to, to our task. And we made the necessary adaptations to make it run in the available data set and to be conditional in using speech audio. But we noticed that some, the gesture responsiveness, responsiveness to speech audio could be improved. What that means is we noticed that the, the generated gestures were not synchronized with, with speech audio. And even when the May agent was not speaking, the, the gestures that was being generated look like gestures that we usually perform when we are speaking. Of course, we didn't want to, we didn't expect the May agent to be completely still while listening, but it was performing gestures as, as like it was speaking. Uh, so these are the main modifications that we, we implemented in the MDM and mostly focusing on overcoming these issues of responsiveness to, to speech audio. So we used uh, WaveLM representations for the audio. We implemented the cross-local attention module inspired by uh, diffuse style gestures. And we also investigated the use of speech activity information to make it explicit and straightforward to the model when there was speech and when there was not. So for the speech activity information, we use a pre-trained voice activity decoder or VAD. Uh, this de detect detector, sorry. This detector was trained in a synthetic data set called LibriParty. It's a data set that contains a lot of background noises, background speech, and it provides uh, binary information. So zero when there is no speech and one if speech is detected. The audio we just resampled to 16,000 Hertz and we passed through a pre-trained WaveLM model. We use the 11th layer of the WaveLM base plus. And for text, text transcript, we use a pre-trained clip model. The motion we represented each pose as a 6D rotation plus global pos position and rotational and positional velocity. We only use data from the May agent. We were generating uh, four seconds uh, motion sequences at a time. And to help motion continuity, we used uh, city poses, 10 frames, city poses from the last generated uh, chunk. This is uh, our model. This is like the, the noiser of the diffusion model. It's pretty similar to MDM and diffusion style gesture. So we have a cross local attention module there. And here are, are the inputs. We divided them into two groups. So first we have here the, the global information, which are the information relevant to the motion sequence as, as a whole, and the fine grain information, which are relevant at a frame level. So we have the audio representations, the speech activity information, and the 
motion sequence to be denoised. Uh, we concatenate this fine-grained information and we stack the global information to match the dimensions at the, at the frame level. Uh, as MDM, we are actually predicting the denoised input from our, our poses and we're using a MSC loss. For the inferency, we notice that some interpolation is necessary to ensure motion continuity. So we interpolate the 10 frames at the edges of the, the motion trunk and we apply a several filter to get rid of the, the jittering. So this is the results of our human likeness and evaluation. So we're like sort of in the middle here. And despite our efforts, we do not achieve the good results in terms of appropriateness for agent speech. We're very close to the chance mark, chance performance, the 50% line here. And another unexpected result, the appropriateness for interlocutor behavior. This was uh, unexpected because we were actually just using the information of the May agent. Um, but yeah, I don't know, maybe if you increase the sample, sample size, it would reach the 15% mark. I, I'm not sure. Uh, we have some additional results here. We run an FGD evaluation in, in our model. This is the, our model of roughly 100 FGD. And here, here we have some variations of, of our model. Again, some surprisingly, the text transcript text transcript is doing more harm than good for, for, our mo for our model. But if you take a look at the variation without speech activity information, our model obtained uh, best result. And here we have uh, the FGG for no clip and no wave LM. What that means is we didn't use text as input and no audio representations from the WaveLM model, we actually use MFCC. And the last one is just a reference using real data, but mismatched, mismatched real data. And one thing that I would also like to point out is that our model had wide variability in performance. So it was capable of yielding good and disappointing results. So we have a wide range in ratings of human likeness. We had some good results in terms, in terms of clear preference for matched uh, motions, but we also had the highest, uh, highest number for clear preference for mismatched results. Um, finally, uh, we still believe that speech activity information provides some valuable information for, for our model. It's a um, straightforward information about if one is speaking or not. And if you want to compute this kind of information using analytical approaches, you may have some trouble to do to background noise, speech, people speaking different volumes. And this information could be lost in some more abstract representations of audio. For future works, of course, we can always improve the motion quality, maybe trying some geometric losses and other representations. But I believe that currently our bottleneck is still in speech audio and gesture alignment. So I would suggest using and other uh, additional audio features, maybe external framework, and of course, using other, other text embeddings, text encoder, because clip is 
again, doing more hard than, than good. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.